Hey, I'm Luke with SNSD Motorsport, and we just had every six, seven power strokes worst nightmare happen to us. Uh, we're gonna explain a little bit about what happened, why it happened, and the carnage, and uh, how you can prevent it. Uh, so let's dive into it. This is a 2018 F-250. It's actually a field test truck that we were doing DCR development with, a customer that's somewhat local to us here. He had one of the original prototype DCRs. It got installed the last November or so. It's mid-June 2023 now. And uh, we actually brought it back in just to update it to put the latest production intent DCR on it. When we uh, tore into it, we had seen some symptoms out of it that was a little bit of rail pressure hang. There was a, it would every maybe week or two, not even that, it would throw a code for a regulator learning code and once uh, over all that time, it threw a code for a high pressure, basically it had a slightly higher rail pressure actual than command for a really short period of time. That was enough to trigger a fault. So actually what we suspected was the electronic relief valve or the DRV on the rail was having a problem because in a common rail fuel system, we'll get into this in a different video, a little more depth. You've got flow into the system, which is the pump. You've got flow out of the system, which is the injectors. And in 6.7 Fords and LMLs and newer generations, a electronic relief valve that can actually throttle um, pressure and flow out of the system. So what we suspected was there might be a problem with this. So we tore into it purely just to update this because the truck actually runs and drives fine. It didn't really have any issues. Uh, we were going to update the DCR um, because it had the prototype, put a production one on it. But we also pulled the DRV off the back of the rail. And what we found was a significant amount of rust and debris stuck on the screen. That's actually based on the symptoms and the data logs that we had, kind of what we suspected. So uh, on our production or on our field test trucks, we had also developed a data logger that we would send with them and it would just run in the background and collect data all the time. So what we found in a couple of cases was a case where you kind of tipped out of the throttle and it's just coasting down rail pressure command would come down, rail pressure actual would start to come down, but then it would just kind of hang. And in those situations, the electronic relief valve ought to, uh, out to relieve that extra pressure. So this ought to open and relieve that pressure to bring the actual pressure down to the command. Well, what we suspected based on the data logs that we had ahead of time was that maybe this was plugged and when it went to try to relieve that pressure, it couldn't. So we pulled it while we were doing the pump swap and found a lot of debris on the relief valve. So I took a, a punch. This particular truck does not have factory filtration on it. It has an aftermarket um, supply pump, aftermarket filters, and a factory engine mount filter delete, all aftermarket stuff. So there is no real water separator um, drain. There's no WIF sensor, water and fuel sensor anymore, so you really don't know. So what I did to get the, to check fuel quality, I basically, honestly, I just punch, got a punch and a hammer and punched a hole in the bottom of a filter to get drain off of the bottom since there is no drain like a normal factory setup. Here's what we found. So really nasty fuel, lots of water, lots of rust on the bottom of it, which correlates to what we found on the relief valve on the end of the rail. So we know we've got significant contamination. This is everybody's worst nightmare in a common rail vehicle, especially any CP4 um, vehicle, which is an LML Duramax, an 11 and up Ford, or a 19 and 20 Cummins, um, because those pumps are not very robust against that type of debris and contamination. They might be just fine for a lot of miles if you have clean fuel, but if you have any kind of contaminants or not normal situations, they cannot deal with it. And that's what causes lots of CP4 failures, which then creates lots of also metal debris and wipes out your whole system. That's the CP4 failure that you hear about. You hear all kinds of horror stories. So this was completely unexpected, completely unscripted. We didn't plan this. We hoped it didn't happen, but actually it was a really good test for the system. Like I say, the truck actually runs and drives fine based on what we found. It has, had, it has had water in the system for a long time because there is a serious amount of rust and buildup. It's not like it just got water in it. 
it's actually had it for a long time. So um, it's had time to corrode and rust throughout a lot of the rest of the system. This is the, the filter that's labeled extreme water separator. This is what it had in it, which is actually not much water. The other filter had a decent amount of water in it, but it's pretty obvious that lots of water got flushed into the rest of the system because the high pressure lines are corroded inside the return line. So this is the line that we supply with the DCR. This is the supply and return to the pump. And there's rust caked up onto the top of the return. So you know that this pump was getting rust and water into it. So kind of a key takeaway, it was a good abusive test of this thing. Um, I'm gonna tear it apart here in a second. Full disclosure, have not popped this thing apart yet. Don't know what it looks like inside. Don't know what we're gonna find, but the truck was running and driving just fine. There was really uh, no symptoms other than occasionally a fault code, but no running and driving issues. So one key takeaway, we'll tear this down in a second, but what made this situation worse was that it did not have factory filtration. If you left the factory filtration in place, it would have had the um, frame mounted or underneath the truck uh, fuel conditioning systems, what they call it, but it's a water separator, it's a filter, it's a drain, and it's a water and fuel sensor. Uh, and then also then later there's a second stage filter that's up on the engine. The factory filters are all plastic also, which you'd kind of assume was just for cost. But in this case, we found the other major benefit of that is that it does not corrode and does not shed rust into the system. Probably the worst thing that happened to this wasn't necessarily the water itself. It was that there is a lot of surface area of corroded metal within these large steel canister filters. And actually worse, we'll show some photos of what the inside of this looks like. Worse yet is what the inside of this steel structure looks like. So the outside of the filter is the dirty side, the inside is the clean side. Well, inside these filters, there's a perforated steel liner that holds the outer material from collapsing. That is just shedding rust into the whole system. So the filters that should have been there to catch debris to protect your expensive high pressure components was actually the one that was generating the debris and shedding it into the rest of the system. So that's a big benefit that honestly a lot of people don't consider and I hadn't really thought about until we saw this, that uh, the factory filters being plastic, there's a big benefit to that if there is water introduced in the system because they at least will do their job of catching the debris instead of generating the debris. Um, in this particular case, it also has the factory uh, filter on the engine deleted. There's aftermarket fuel filter deletes. And when they have these other aftermarket supply pumps and filters up underneath, the thought is, well, you don't need the engine mounted one. Well, if this had the engine mounted one, it would have at least caught a lot of the debris that these aftermarket filters were pushing up into the pump and the rust that was generated by that. So this was absolute worst case. The other problem is when you do these aftermarket lift pumps and filters, it bypasses the factory water and fuel sensor. So this has had water in the system for months, but the owner driver never knew because he never got a notification. The truck was running fine thanks to the DCR and um, there was no dash notification like there would be in a normal situation. That's the whole reason for the factory filtration the way it is and a water and fuel sensor. You want to know quickly if you have water so you can hurry up and get the water out of the system before it starts to corrode everything. This thing's been sitting here circulating water and the filters are shedding and generating rust into the system. Absolute worst case, driver has no idea whatsoever because he doesn't have the factory water and fuel sensor anymore that would have been the, the prayer that you'd have to, to remedy the situation. So anyways, completely unplanned, this thing kind of just fell into our lap and we found a, uh, a mess to deal with. Good work, Dane. And uh, try to give somebody something nice. And then now this is what we get. But he's a good customer, good friend of Justin's, and um, we're gonna try to get it squared away and figure out how to, uh, how to remedy it. For starters, I'm gonna tear this pump down. And as I said, I have not done this, don't know what it's gonna look like. 
actually I'll pull the FCA first. So the DCR, this version of the DCR actually has a special corrosion resistant FCA that should help in this type of situation. It also has a screen on the end of it to help catch debris so it doesn't seize up. And it was not locked up. It actually looks like it's in pretty good shape. There's a little bit of rust debris on the screen on the end of it. Usually give it a good sniff test. There is corrosion and rust inside of the flange here. The real test is gonna be what's it look like in here because there's rust coming out of the pump, which means you know it got fed rust and water. So poor thing really took a beating. So we know that due to the, the CP4's design of metal on metal cam on a roller and not much, um, there's really very little room for error there that if you got, if you introduced anything like what this thing has, it would make that thing fail and it would send lots of metal shrapnel throughout the rest of the system. The pump would die and you'd be stuck on the side of the road with a really, really expensive bill. So um, the case of this one, because the pump is much more robust, it, let me use the uh, proper hammer and tool here. This wasn't super planned out, as you can tell. I'm just trying to do it live so that uh, you can see what we see. So the cam actually looks surprisingly good. If I can get this to sit without tipping over. Okay. All the wear surfaces where there's actually a bushing, it looks like brand new. In between where like some of the joints are and the machined grooves, clearance grooves, there's a little bit of corrosion there, but it's actually really not bad. There again, I wasn't exactly prepared. So do what we need to to make it happen. <clears throat> so, the pump looks surprisingly good inside. Um, we'll get some shots in here. You can definitely tell it's been fed with water and rust from that aftermarket supply system, but I am pleasantly surprised. I'll bet this pump, actually we pretty well know from how the truck was running that it was perfectly fine, but we're gonna, I don't wanna tear it down too far because we're gonna actually put it back together and run it on the bench and compare it to the data when this particular pump was new and we'll be able to plot those two over the top of each other and see how the performance was. So, um, I wanted to tear it down one to make sure it wasn't completely caked and packed full of corrosion and rust like some of the rest of these components are. We didn't want to contaminate our test bench. But in this case, it looks pretty good. There's some rust in some of these feed bores and some of the bores going out. But at this point, it's not bad enough that I think it's worth the data and worth the risk of going ahead and running it on the test bench to see exactly as it came out of the truck, how the pump's performing. So based on a soft teardown, what we found was actually much less damage than what I expected based on how terrible the rest of the system was. But this really just goes to show the quality of the materials used and the durability of the design. Even the cam itself that obviously saw a lot of water doesn't have hardly any corrosion on it. The internals, the bushing, the roller, the high pressure like piston plungers, uh, everything looks really, really good. Uh, it really just, like I say, goes to show the quality of the materials used, the quality of the manufacturing, 
and the overall architecture and design can handle this kind of thing, uh, which is really not the case for uh, any of the alternatives. So uh, this, is, this is what we wanted to see, and so far it, it showed us it was good. This was an unintentional test of the robustness of this particular design versus some competing designs. Anything that's a CP4 based design just cannot handle this kind of abuse. Uh, just, just, it's just not set up for it. The thing might work fine in lab environments. It might work fine with good clean fuel, but you never know what you're gonna get. This is a perfect example of that. This is fairly controlled testing. Um, like I say, it's been installed for uh, seven, eight months now or so, and truck's running great. But obviously at some point in time, he got bad fuel, had no idea. You never know what you're pumping in the truck, and even if you think you're going to the stations that are safe, you just you just don't know. is the is the is the real summary. So, uh, if you're protected with a pump that's not going to lay down on you, you'll be all right. So the plan, I think, is what we're going to do is uh, test this, make sure it's good, and then we'll decide whether we want to actually put one of the production pumps back on it, or if we want to try to flush the system the best we can and actually put this all back together and put it back in the truck, um, and uh, just to kind of prove that everything's good and it'll handle the abuse. So keep an eye out for the next follow-up videos on what we're gonna do with it. We'll post some re results of the bench testing, but so far looks great. DCR is bulletproof. Thanks.